We've got five months left to go in this year with a lot of great Switch games on the way. There's a lot of big obvious ones like Metroid Dread, we've got some Pokemon remakes, Shin Megami Tensei 5, WarioWare, and even more than that. But I want to focus on maybe the lesser known of games and go over 10 Switch games we're getting still in 2021 that you do not want to miss out on. Assuming they actually do come out this year. Kicking things off, I want to talk about a pair of games coming from what is now one of my favorite indie devs, .emu. Now, if that name doesn't ring a bell to you, their biggest, most recent release was Streets of Rage 4 that came out last year and just recently got a new DLC update available on all its platforms, and they do excellent work when it comes to retro love letter games. Titles that are really balancing both kind of capturing what was excellent about those titles back in the day, while still making the necessary updates and changes that really bring them to the modern era. And they've got two more games planned for coming out this year that are taking that same approach with other franchises. The first of which is Windjammers 2. Now this is actually a game that I've talked about a few times in the past because we've known about it for quite some time. It was announced back in 2018, around the same time that Dotemu was porting the original Windjammers to modern systems. Now the original Windjammers was a game that came out back in the 90s and was a bit of a cult hit. It didn't actually do super great back when it was originally released, but it got a lot more attention after kind of word of mouth spread and ports were made of available on modern systems. Generally, I'm not really a huge fan of sports games, but this occupies that territory of really being, yes, sports in concept, but it's a much more arcade style, fast paced action game that is loads of fun to play. You can play the original one right now again that has been ported to the Switch, and Windjammers 2 is taking the same kind of treatment that Streets of Rage 4 got, where we're updating the visuals with their more kind of cartoony art style, and gonna be making additional additions and changes to gameplay. Again, this is a game that we've known about for quite some time, and was actually planned for as way back as 2019, but due to various pushbacks, it has not been made available just yet and is planned to come out this year, hopefully. Now, the other game I want to talk about from .emu was actually just announced a couple months back, and it's not being developed internally by them. It is a title they are publishing, which is TMNT Shredder's Revenge. Growing up, I absolutely loved Turtles in Time. It was and still is one of my absolute favorite beat-em-up games, and this is meant to really be a successor to that specific TMNT game. As such, the formula for this game is pretty obvious. It's a side-scrolling beat-em-up that allows for one to four players to work together. You can do local or online multiplayer, and most importantly, it just really captures the visuals and vibes of this beat-em-up classic. Now, like I mentioned earlier, this is not being developed internally by .emu, so it is not necessarily going to be the exact same kind treatment that we saw with Streets of Rage 4, but it is being done by Tribute Games, who also has a track record of making some really good retro love letter style games. Some particular standouts, to me at least, including Mercenary Kings, and most recently just last year, Panzer Paladin. Like with Windjammers 2, we do not have an official final release date for this title just yet, but it is slated for 2021, and I'm really hoping it hits that date, but if it needs a little more time, I'm willing to wait because I am very excited for this one. Shifting gears, let's talk about Fatal Frame Maiden of Blackwater. Now, this is actually a game I talked about last year when I made a list of what Wii U games we were still waiting on seeing to get ported to the Switch, and turns out this is one of the games that did finally end up getting an announced port of the Switch, leaving just a couple titles left like Xenoblade Chronicles X. Anyways, the point is that this game was originally released on the Wii U as an exclusive, and it was locked there for the time being until it's now been announced that this game is getting ported to the Switch, along with actually everything else out there, Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. The Fatal Frame franchise is a classic when it comes to the sort of very specific vibe of Japanese horror games. Now, if you've never played any of these games before or never even heard of them, the basic concept is that you are dealing with different ghosts and evil spirits that are haunting people, and you have to deal with them by capturing them on a camera. That's the only thing you really have in terms of a weapon. You're not destroying things outright. You're just taking photos of them at the right moment before they grab and damage you. With that being the main gameplay focus, these really aren't super action-heavy horror games as much as they are really driven by atmosphere and storytelling to give you that really kind of deep, unsettling feeling, which I honestly have a lot more fun with. Truth be told, Maiden Blackwater is not the best entry in the franchise. That really belongs to some of the older ones, in particular Fatal Frame 2, but it is still a great game and really one of the few that's coming out these days that still taps into that particular style of genre. And so I really recommend checking it out now that it's going to be made available to a lot more people, because while it was available on the Wii U seven years ago, the Wii U didn't really have a lot of people owning systems. So now that it's coming to the Switch along with a bunch of other consoles, I highly recommend giving it a look when it drops just in time for Halloween on October 28th. 
Another game that we're still kind of in suspense about, about whether or not it'll actually come out this year, is Eastward. This is a game that was revealed back in 2019 for a 2020 release date, which obviously didn't happen. And it's still slated for 2021, but we don't have any kind of full specifics yet. Uh, if you haven't seen this game before, it actually reminds me a lot of if you had taken the kind of basic concept of the original Last of Us, but released it on the SNES with a tone that, at least based on the trailers, looks a little more hopeful and happy uh, versus the kind of, well, sad feelings. Now, I don't just mean this because of the basic pitch of, you know, post-apocalyptic world with an older man and a young girl surviving and exploring, that kind of deal, but also because of the fact that gameplay-wise, it is a top-down adventure game that's focused on not only defeating enemies by switching between these two characters, but also on using both of them to solve environmental puzzles. It almost kind of reminds me if you took the sort of the basic formula of Zelda, but mixed in that Last of Us style plot and setting to create, honestly, a really interesting looking game. Art style and music that we've seen in trailers is fantastic. And there's actually already been a few extended gameplay demos that have been posted as well. I believe IGN has one that goes for a full 20 minutes. It's a really interesting looking game and I'm hoping it comes out this year, but if not, I'm definitely gonna keep my eyes open for whenever it does finally drop. There's a couple different Retro Indie love letters that I'm talking about on this list, but one of the biggest ones coming out this year, hopefully, is Axiom Verge 2. And the original Axiom Verge was a Metroidvania that really, honestly, I feel like almost isn't the right term. It's much more really just Metroid. The original Metroid is clearly the main influence on this game. It doesn't really pull a lot of the mechanics that started entering that genre later with stuff like Castlevania and all the different love letters that came after that. It really is rooted more on just the Metroid aspects of the formula, which makes it a lot more appealing to anyone who grew up with that specific version of the game. Now, the sequel was announced back in 2019 as part of a Nintendo Indie Showcase, and it sounds like the second one is at least going to be a timed exclusive to the Switch when it releases which is still a little bit of a question. It was supposed to come out back in 2020 and it's gotten multiple delays, the most recent of which was announced back in May of this year. It's still planned for 2021, but given the numerous pushbacks in the past, I think there is still that chance that maybe it's gonna end up needing a little more time. We'll hopefully find out soon. Remakes and remasters have been a big thing over the last couple of years, and one title that was kind of a surprise reveal earlier this year, also at a Nintendo Indie Showcase, was House of the Dead Remake. One of the most classic light gun arcade experiences ever made is getting released on the Switch and supposedly other platforms later sometime this year. One of the reasons why I'm really excited about this is that something that I think was a really big strength for the Wii, or was kind of like a hidden gem thing for it, was the number of rail shooters that worked with the Wiimote. I absolutely loved buying a gun attachment for the Wiimote and playing a bunch of old school style rail shooters. And that really isn't something that Nintendo has done with the Switch, given the motion technology in the Joy-Con isn't the exact same as how things work on the Wiimote, but it's just something that still makes a lot of sense to me and I would love to have more of on the platform. So not only am I just really excited to play this because it's a remake of a classic, but I'm also really hoping that maybe if it does well, this can signal boost a little more. Hey, here's a genre that maybe the Switch could use a lot more of because I would love that. There's a lot of indie games out there that do a great job of having small, isolated story experiences that leave a big impression. And one of my favorites that did this excellently is Oxenfree. And just recently, we got a reveal that Oxenfree 2 should be happening this year. The original Oxenfree was a narrative-focused game, very similar to a point-and-click adventure that had a very heavy emphasis on replayability, partially based on seeing how certain things turn out a little differently based on choices you make, but there was also a really cool narrative gimmick that I don't really want to reveal because that spoils the whole point of playing through the game. But it gave you a really cool, interesting reason to want to replay it multiple times. It's very rare for me to finish a game and immediately go, oh, I want to start a second playthrough right now. And Oxenfree is one of those games that absolutely had that impact on me. We only have one trailer to work off of right now for Oxenfree 2, but it looks like it'll be taking place at the same location, although giving you probably new areas to explore and that kind of deal, but with a new cast of characters taking place at a different time. While on paper that might sound like it's gonna end up retreading a lot of similar ground, one of the things that really stood out about the original game was again, having almost Shyamalan style twists that catch you off guard. And so I'm sure based on what little information we're getting so far, there's gonna be a lot of surprises that the sequel has in store. Another retro love letter I wanna talk about as I'm beginning to realize that I might've stacked a few too many on this list is Pocky and Rocky Reshrined. Pocky and Rocky is an older series that we have not had a new entry of in quite a very long time 
time. These were top-down shooter games that weren't really like the plain style ones where you're, you know, focused in one direction, taking on waves of enemies. It's not really a bullet hell. Rather, it's kind of a mixture of that with a beat em up where you're controlling characters that have full 360 degree movement and take down enemies on these maps. Now, these games were fun to play in their single player modes, but honestly, what really make them really fun for me is the two player co-op options. And that is something that is making a return in Reshrined, which isn't really a remake, nor is it really entirely a sequel. It's kind of a hybrid of the two. Basically, the game is going to have levels from the classic games brought back and updated in this new visual style with updated new gameplay mechanics, while also having completely brand new content and levels included as well. One of the reasons why I'm really excited for this one too is because it's bringing back a franchise that really doesn't have a super accessible way of being played right now. Uh, hunting down physical copies of the originals is very, very expensive, uh, even by most retro game standards now where prices are going up everywhere. Uh, and there's not really a great way to play them digitally either. So getting this new entry is gonna be able to open up to a lot more audiences that just don't have a way of playing this franchise otherwise. Now, something very different from the rest of this list, but I really wanna give some attention to is a port that we're getting possibly this year for the Nintendo Switch is Disco Elysium. This originally came out on the PC back in 2019 and it got a updated patched version that came out earlier this year that added more content and more voiced over lines. And it is one of my favorite RPGs to come out in the past couple years. It's not really the RPG in a way that some people might conceive of it. It's not like a game where you're building up a party of characters to fight monsters or something like that. Instead, it is a narrative focused game that is basically a detective story driven by your choices and how you build your character. The writing and voice acting in this game is simply superb, and depending on how you build your character, a lot of different narrative bits and directions things can go will change quite a bit. Now, one word of warning about this that I want to give real quick is that this game did get one port so far on the PlayStation that was not great at launch. It had a lot of performance issues when it was initially released that did end up getting fixed. And so, especially with something like the Switch, which is a lower power system, Maybe just wait a little bit after it comes out. I definitely want people to take a look at this one, but don't necessarily pick it up on day one. Wait to see what people say, how well it runs, maybe see if it gets patched or fixes. If it runs great, awesome, grab it there. If it doesn't, honestly, you should still try and grab this on PC because it is a fantastic game. Now, one game that is arguably actually a lot bigger name-wise than a lot of these on this list, but I think it is one that not a lot of people necessarily give enough attention to, is one of the things that was announced at Nintendo's E3 this past year is we are getting a remake of Advance Wars, specifically a combo of Advance Wars 1 and 2 called Reboot Camp. Advance Wars was a series on the Game Boy Advance that got a couple sequels going as far into the DS, but we didn't get any new entries for a long time afterwards, primarily because Advance Wars was made by Intelligent Systems, who nowadays is known a lot more for making Fire Emblem. And as far as I can tell, that's really all they're gonna be making moving forward. And so it really felt like we weren't gonna see this series ever again. So much so that different indie devs started stepping up, making their own spiritual successors, one of the biggest of which is Wargroove, which does an excellent job of capturing that same kind of feel, but makes it a fantasy setting. But now we're actually getting a way to play the original games updated for the Nintendo Switch. Now, I will be honest, part of me was kind of hoping that maybe it would maintain some of the more pixel aesthetic of the GBA games, but I still love the new art style of this one, which is being handled by Way Forward, the same devs behind Shantae, and you can definitely see how that kind of art style has influenced the look of this new title. Being a remake of the game, it is going to be featuring the campaigns from both the first and second Advance War games from the GBA, and on top of that is also bringing back multiplayer with the ability to play between two and four players locally or online. I know I've had a lot of games on this list where we don't actually have a for sure release date just yet, but thankfully this is one of the ones that we do know will be releasing on December 3rd of this year. So those are 10 games that I'm excited for on the Switch coming out this year. There's honestly a lot more on top of that. I'm sure you guys have some favorites that were not talked about. So let me know down in the comments down below what games you're excited for this year or even beyond for the Switch and other consoles. And I'll see you guys later.